My first OMD camera was the inaugural EM5, an early forerunner of the OM5 that I am currently using. As with its latest version, now OM system, it was extremely versatile for travel photography. The image quality was excellent, as I hope this selection of images show. High contrast compositions are always a challenge for the photographer, even with today's technology, and in some cases with easy answers that bypass the craft of photography in this digital age. This type of shot was difficult in my film days, no easier today if you want to avoid blown out highlights ending up as a pure white. Today we have products like Lightroom and Photoshop allowing the photographer to spot meter a highlight and then correct underexposed shadows in post-production without generating noise which I prefer, incidentally, to overexposed highlights when faced with a choice. The 12-50 was the kit lens for the EM5. Although no longer in production, I still have one, and it is much better than often assumed at the time. Just Landscapes 17 is taken with that lens. It was very useful when you didn't want to carry the much heavier 12-100 to Pro lens. Today, I use it with my EM10. Any shot that includes the sun risks flare, a degradation of the image with streaks of harsh light across it. A small aperture reduces the risk, particularly when using a zoom lens, but a small aperture can also reduce the quality of the image. Positioning the sun behind a tree has permitted me to use f11, an aperture that could normally cause flare without the tree acting as a mask. It has also caused a natural starburst without a filter. If you are looking for an accurate photo of a swan, this fails. Why? Well, its plumage is burnt out. Very difficult with this type of shot when they are not the main feature. Taken over 10 years ago, camera and software technology has vastly improved, especially for images of a high dynamic range. But for now, this is the best I can do, without degrading the quality of the bridge, which of course is the main point of the photograph. Might have done better with the swan's plumage here, because the light is not so intense. This shot is near Canary Wharf a constantly changing landscape, and therefore it goes quickly out of date. Not so good if you are shooting for commercial purposes. This image was taken at least ten years ago. Again in Canary Wharf, and right at its centre. It is taken from a shopping centre, and therefore it wasn't a right of way. I was asked to move on, but uh, they let me keep the shot because it has done well in camera club competitions. I love dominant shadows, particularly when they create patterns. I spot meter a highlight and then save the raw, allowing the shadows to be rendered underexposed. These are then rescued in post-production, and I have considerable control as to how much detail I show. By keeping the raw file, I can change my mind later and I'm very good at that. Alexandra Palace is an iconic structure on a hilltop north of London, and because of its great historical importance, particularly in television, it has been faithfully preserved. Had to rescue the shadow around the rose window in post-production, but waited for the people to depart as well. Matters were made worse, as there was an important darts match in progress. I was asked if I was going, but said no, as later in the day I was going to the ballet. Conversation suddenly ended, but I was telling the truth. In my profession, it is amazing how people immediately assume the wrong thing. Carrying an expensive camera outdoors means, yes, you are shooting birds. But when I say, no, landscapes, the conversation ceases as quickly as the person who was hoping that I was going to watch darts 
not ballet. Ah, oh, well, can't win the whole time, can you? Image stabilization in today's cameras and lenses are a major asset. But now this shot was taken many years ago, yet it is, yes, I think it is, yes, it is sharp. It is hand-held. I wouldn't be very popular by trying to erect a tripod in such a popular place, and there wasn't a convenient wall or pillar. Ah, oh dear. Oh, well, I was completely unprepared. There might be a bit of noise, but uh, software these days are very good at taming that problem. Notice that I have underexposed my three whole stops. This will ensure that the sky is black, and gives a bit of extra flexibility regarding shutter speed. Even so, by leaving the camera on program, it didn't choose the largest aperture. If I am honest, this technique is no better than a snap, a case of we'll try it or forget it. I enjoy finding interesting buildings away from the public gaze, and Charlton House, not far from the Greenwich Honeypot, might fall into that category. For buildings you need the right day to make them come alive, and in winter shadows can be a problem. This is the West Front, so should I have waited for the sun to illuminate the façade better? Or does it currently provide a degree of modelling? More shadows, but this time leading the eye to the church framed by the lich gate. Now I used F11 on aperture priority, as it was essential to have the foreground absolutely sharp. Increasing depth of field with aperture choice can be a fine balancing act, as a smaller aperture, say F16 or 22, would not only risk camera shake, but also diffraction caused by a small aperture. The wide-angle end of the lens has helped to increase depth of field. A visit to Rochester Castle is also one of the best viewpoints for the cathedral and its setting within the town. Good strong light is of course absolutely essential for this type of shot, if it is intended to show every possible detail. I have shown a few buildings in a selection of just landscapes. The EM5 was an excellent travel camera, a pedigree now inherited by its successor, the OM5, which I currently use. With the 12 to 50 lens, the quality was actually good enough for commercial publication. It is worth remembering that if your photographic plans include stepping outside the amateur circle, then the type of gear you choose to use has no particular relevance, provided its quality rises to a certain high level, and most quality digital cameras on the market today achieve that admirable objective. Usually, the problem is how the photographer takes the picture, where its commercial value is going to override artistic situations, and certainly the make of camera employed. A certain make of camera does not make you a better photographer.